All right, welcome back, Hananiga Honors Algebra Two. Today we're going to talk about 10.6 binomial distribution. Um, this is actually a really cool section. Uh, like, what is the chances of something happening based on percentages? So, a random variable is a variable whose value is determined by the outcome to the probability of experiment. For example, when you roll six-sided die, you can define the random variable x that represents the number of showing on the dice. So, the possibility or values for x are one, two, three, four, five, and six, and it's equally likely for all of them to occur. So the probability distribution for this particular situation is I can have a 1, 6 chance to roll a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. So probability distribution is a function that gives the probability of each possible value of random variable. The sum of all the possibilities in a probability distribution should always equal 1. So if I add them all up, there's a 100% chance when I roll the die that I will roll a number 1 through 6. With that being said, though, not everything is always equal. So the spinner is divided into e three equal parts. Let x be the random variable that represents the sum of the spinner spun twice. And that is the key that it's spun twice. So it's equally likely that you will hit a 0, 1, or 2. But what are the possible sums if I spun it twice? Well, I could get 0. Or I could get 1, I could get 2, I could get 3, or I could get 4. So if I spun the spinner twice and added up the two spins, these are all the possible outcomes that might occur. Now, the only way, so there's six possibilities here. Right In the first spin, I can get anywhere from 0 to 2. And the second spin, I, sh I could get 0 to 2. So now, how many ways can I get zero? Well, there's only one way to get a zero. How many ways are there to get one? Well, I could get a zero and a one, or a one and a zero. So there's two ways of getting one. Two, zero and a two. So I'm going to write these zero and a two, a one and a one, a two and a zero. So there's three ways of getting a two. Three. I could get a 1 and a 2, or a 2 and a 1. So there's two ways there. And there's only one way to get a 4. With that being said then, how many possible outcomes are there? So again, there's nine possible outcomes, right? And I'm going to list those. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. And 2, 0, 2, 1, and 2, 2. So there's nine possible outcomes. So the chances of getting two spins and the sum of which is 0 is a 1 in 9 chance. 2 in 9 chance. 3 in 9. 2 in 9. And I reduced that one. 1 in 9. So it's not equally likely then for the sum values. Even though it's equally likely that you would roll or a spin a 0, a 1, or a 2, it's not equally likely that the sum of two rolls then. With that being said, we then could go ahead and do a, so this would be 1 ninth, 2 ninths, 3 ninths, again 1 third, and so then 0, 1, 2, 3, or a 4. So there's a 1 ninth chance, there's a 2 ninths chance, there's a 3 ninths or 1 third chance, 2 ninths. And so this is the probability distribution of two spins and the sum of those two spins. So the highest likely outcome is that you will get two using two spins. Use the probability distribution in example one. What is the most likely spin then? And I already answered this question. If the spinner is a sum of two. What is the probability that the sum of two spins is odd? So let's go back here. So one and three are odd. So two ninths and two ninths. And remember, it's the word uh, one or three. And so the probability of getting an odd spin is four ninths because you add the two together. One type of probability distribution is a binomial distribution. A binomial distribution shows the probabilities of outcomes of a binomial experiment. This is the formula involved, and that will be given to you. It's based on the fact of the number of trials 
and the possible outcome, success, or failure. So this is a situation that you have basically two, it's binomial, meaning two, situations that could occur. For instance, if I'm shooting a basket, I'm either going to make it or I'm going to miss it. If it's a true-false question, I'm either going to get it right or I'm going to get it wrong. So this is a binomial distribution formula. Now, NCK, meaning the number of possible, and then the number that you're actually going to get, this is percentage, so this P is the percent of, percent it's going to happen, and this is the percent, and this is the percent that it's not going to happen. So this is success, and this is failure. And it's raised to the K power, and this would be raised to the N minus K power. So here we go. According to a survey, 62% of the adults have visited a dentist in the past year. You have five randomly selected adults, whether they have had been to the dentist in the past year. Draw a histogram, and I have a histogram right here. So if I talk to five people, maybe nobody has been to the dentist. One, two, three, four, or all five. And so our scenario here is out of the five, nobody, percent of success, percent of failure. And so those two exponents have to add up to the total number of people. And so the next one, 0 0.62 uh, success, 0.38 failure. Two, 0.62 success raised to the second, failure raised to the third. Again, each one of these as we go here. And so we're going to have to put this in our calculator here. So give me one quick second. This should be a three. So success, failure. Six two success, point three eight failure. And the last one, five out of five, success, failure. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the calculator and do one of these, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit pause for the rest of them. So I'm going to show just one. So 50.62. So calculator now. Math, probability, option three. So I have five getting zero, point six two raised to the, whoa, sorry about that. Point six two raised to the zero. Point three eight raised to the fifth. And so point zero zero seven nine. So Point zero zero seven nine. So go ahead and hit pause right now um, and go ahead and calculate all of these. So I'll go ahead and do the same. All right, welcome back. Um, point zero six five, point two one one, point three four four, point two eight one. and point oh nine two. And rounding to three decimal places is is plenty. So this is the chances of each one of these events occurring. So now, on the test, you're going to be given a question like this, and basically you're going to have to do a histogram of each one of these. So I'm going to have to toggle back and forth. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the number of people in our particular survey that actually went to the dentist, and then you're going to need to come up with some increments going up, and you probably could go by like 0.1 each time, 
point two, point three, point four, point five, point six, point seven, point eight, because we don't have anything above point eight. So now, what is the chances of zero? It's really small. Basically, you're thinking the chances of that happening is like basically one percent. So point zero zero seven or one percent. Point zero six five. So point zero six five. So again, about halfway there. Point two one one. So now we're getting a little bit higher. I'll call I'll call her that in in just a second. Point three four four. So point three four four. Point two eight and point oh nine. Point two eight and point oh nine. So filling that in, filling in our histogram here. So there's some questions that go along with this, and again, I'm going to have to toggle back and forth. Use the binomial distribution in example three to answer the question. What is the most likely outcome in the survey? So what has the highest outcome of actually occurring? Three. Three people out of the five have gone to the dentist. Now, what is the probability of more than three? So, and now we're talking about four or five. So, anytime you use the word or, I should have wrote that as four or five. Anytime you use the word or, you should be adding the two together. So, 0 0.281 to 0.092. So I add those two together, point 0.281 plus point 0.092, point 0.373, or a 37.3% chance that you'll have four or more, four, excuse me, four or five or more than three surveyed that have gone to the dentist. Joey is a 75% free throw shooter in the in the next basketball game, he shoots 11 free throws. What is the probability that he makes exactly 11? So we have a scenario in which he's going to shoot 11. He wants to make 7. Now, 75% he's going to make of the 7, and then 0.25 of the 4 that he's going to miss. So again, the first one is the percentage of success, and the second one is the percentage of failure. So now, pull out a calculator and so math, probability, and again depending on how old or new your calculator is. I apologize, I hit the wrong button, so 7. And then I have 0.75 raised to the seventh. times 0.25 raised to the fourth, and I get 172, or a 17.2% chance that of this situation occurring that he will make exactly seven free throws in the game. Homework assignment will be a worksheet today. Please make sure that if you have questions, you talk to your teacher, and good luck.